Hey guys, what's going on? FY my pawn here. I am here to do something unlike what I've done before, and that is to provide you guys a quick... what I would say a session zero. Or a stream zero, if it, as it were. I'm here to explain to you a few things that we are going to be doing before we get into, you know, Wrath of the Righteous. And... Yeah, hopefully you guys will enjoy this, because it's going to give you guys some information on what you could build, and give you a rough idea on how to get photos into the game. So, without further ado, let's go into the tutorial, and I will show you what is needed to be done. So, to start with, we're going to go with a new game to begin with. Um, given the circumstances, it doesn't really matter what we ultimately end up doing, but I'm here to show you essentially a few things and a few th and what I'm going to be ending up building in general. So you guys will get to uh, enjoy the rough idea of what you can be expected, and this is basically just going to be a rundown of what you can do in Wrath of the Righteous. So, starting off, we're going to address, well, once we get into the setup, we're going to quickly go, I don't know, we'll start with core here. There we go. Uh, hold on, let's go back, actually. Now, you may hear cuts in the video, I apologize for that, but there is a reason for this. So, starting off, difficulty. We're going to go over that. For the gameplays that I usually go through, I normally go with core difficulty. That's usually the standard for getting achievements. And it's not recommended for people that don't want to actually suffer through their experience. Because the last thing you want is to be suffering in a game you're trying to enjoy. So only do core if you're looking to get achievements. Don't go any further than that. Unless you're planning to play Unfair, in which case, good luck to you. <laughs> I don't plan on doing that anytime soon, and if I do, well, that's only because I have some, you know, crazy things planned. <clears throat> Alright, so the first thing you should keep in mind is the only active companions receive experience bubble. This will help you in the early game a lot, especially if you're looking to make the main character have a lot more experience than anybody else that you pick up along the journey. If you have this off, it is a detriment. So have this turned on at least for a little bit until you start bringing in your in the people you actually want to bring in. If you're doing this with uh, other compatriots, such as, I don't know, Say you're trying to pick up the main characters along the way. You can turn this off and just leave it as is. And the game will run fine regardless. But the reason you would want this on is if you ever have a situation where you want to just level up by yourself. And power level yourself away. Uh, for my case... I'm going to be doing this for the beginning of what I'm going to be doing for the series of session one, or stream one. So I'm going to have that on, but for now, I'm just going to leave it off. But otherwise, anything else goes, it really depends on your story. But we're going to go with core here, and we'll continue on. Okay, starting off, we're going to go for a custom character. Simple as that. Now. You have a few options here, as you can tell, but I'm going to show you a quick tutorial on how to actually get your own custom characters in. Now, as you can see, I've already got a few custom photos in here already, uh, but there is a specific way on how to do it. Now, first of all, you're going to want to click this, and it will show you three different PNG sizes. You have to make sure these are PNG photos, I do believe. Otherwise, it will not transfer properly. Now, because I already have the PNGs set aside, 
I will put them in. But to give you a rough estimation as I'm doing this, there is going to be three types of photos you can choose from. Or three types of photos that they show you. There is the small photo, the medium photo, and the full length photo. You basically need to take your photos with the sizes in, sh as shown, copy and paste them, and change their name to small, medium, and full length. That is the key thing in order to get your photos involved in this game. So, for example, say you wanted to replace small. It is currently a 180... It says it's a 188 by 220 or 244 image, which is odd. But you can follow uh, the 185 242 photo uh, image instead, if you so desire. Both work. It really doesn't change much. But I'm going to quickly put in the photo for uh, our main character, and we will get into that. So just give me a second. Okay, that is medium done, and now we just need full length. Now, it is very grammar sensitive, so keep that in mind as you're doing this, but otherwise you should be fine and good to go. And there we go. We now have Skeletor in for uh, portraits, and that is how uh, you essentially do it. Uh, because of the circumstances, I have uh, made it a... Uh, I tried to do my best to make the photo as appreciative as possible, so it is transparent. It's. I take no credit for the photo I'm using. That goes all to the author, whoever they may be, so... If they want to claim credit, that's up to them, but I'm just using it for the purposes of this game. Alright, now, to give you a rough idea on classes, there really is a plethora you can choose from. So it really depends on what you want to go. As you can see, there's a lot more classes that you can go for in this game. So. The world is literally your oyster when it comes to choices. For us in particular, we want to focus on Sorcerer specifically. So we're going to be going Sorcerer. As for what Sorcerer? We are going to go the Sylvan Sorcerer route. Now, some of you may be wondering why I'm going Sylvan Sorcerer when compared to any other sorcerer, like Overwhelming Mage, for example. Overwhelming... Well, it's not a problem with the classes, it's more a theme set that I've got set up. Now, with Sylvan Sorcerer specifically, he... Skeletor would ultimately end up getting an animal companion. Now, for those of you who do not know of uh, Skeletor's, you know, backstory, he does have a pet companion and I do believe it's called Panther or something along those lines I'm not sure of the name but he would be getting an animal companion as a panther so he does have that advantage going for him as for why I couldn't just go <coughs> as for why I couldn't go with uh, anybody else going with that route um well, if you know my Kingmaker series, uh, Jetstream Sam originally used to own uh, Blade Wolf, 
who I gave to him. So that ultimately made sense for his character. I'm basically doing the same exact thing for Skeletor. So that is why he's going Sylvan Sorcerer as opposed to something else. Plus, in addition, some of the abilities from Sylvan Sorcerer actually line up with what Skeletor is about, oddly enough. We do lose out on the Bloodline, but we do get a focus on Sylvan Bloodline, which gives us more uh, enchantment-based effects, which actually do apply to Skeletor's acts, such as Hideous Laughter, or even Deep Slumber, because he has been known to use such things, in addition to his, you know, freeze ray magic. But yeah, that is basically why I'm choosing the Sylvan Bloodline, or Sylvan Sorcerer specifically, and that's my choice, essentially. Mind you, I am not going to strict, er, uh, stick specifically to Sorcerer. I will be getting some archetypes to add to it, or... Well, not archetypes, but... I will be getting some classes to add to uh, the benefits, because this game demands that you min-max to some degree. Otherwise, you are in for a world of hurt. There's a reason I'm doing this, and it's important. But yeah, we're going to be going Sylvan Sorcerer. Obviously, there are more choices that you can go for. Um, if I were to suggest anything, I personally find the Oracle to be a good staple. I've also found that a Monk is a really powerful class to play in this game as well. Try your best to get a high AC. That is my best advice for you. Because if you can't focus on a high AC, then you, obviously your tanks are going to go down, and it's just hellish. But I digress. Let's continue on. Now, I could go with any race I wanted with uh, Skeletor, because he is considered a skeleton. So, obviously, the natural choice would be Dampire, right? Sure, that's a very good idea, but I'm not going to be doing that. Instead, I'm going to be going specifically for the Half-Elf. And this is more a mechanical reason than I, that I'm doing this than a, you know, opinionated decision. Now, Skeletor is hard to pinpoint on what race he used to be. In fact, he was a very specific race, if I do recall correctly. A race of demon. So, going by that we sort of got a situation where we're free to choose any race we want so long as it looks somewhat humanoid. This is why I'm going to be going half-elf, obviously. And I'm going to actually going to go for the... Well, I'm going to go for the Kindred Rage, or Raised uh, Acclamation. I will lose out on the Keen Senses, Adiptability, and Elven Immunities, but... This is the only class that gives plus four to charisma, or rather race that gives plus four to charisma. So it is the best course of action if you're looking to focus into charisma as a sorcerer specifically. So it's always good to get a kindred raised uh, sorcerer if you're going to choose any race, but that's if you're trying to min-max, which I'm trying to do a little bit, but not so much. <clears throat> Background selection is another interesting one. If I do recall correctly, most of these things are not too much of a worry. If you can see here, we've got Knowledge Arcana, Persuasion, and you as Magic Device, so we don't have much skills to choose from anyways. But if we're going to choose something, we should probably go for skills that are going to focus into Charisma. So, let's focus on things like... One second. So less things focusing on dexterity or strength and whatnot, and more focus leaning towards charisma. So you probably want to go for things like uh, noble as a choice. This is optional though, so don't have to don't force yourself to be choosing this. But there are many ways you can go about this. As for what we are going to go for, I'm actually going to choose something that fits. Uh, Skeletor's role, 
And I think leader is the obvious choice, but let me see if there's anything else that fits better. Hmm. I don't think there is. Hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I don't see anything that would uh, otherwise appeal here. Nothing that seems to fit anyways. Uh, I could go... Well, what is there? Yeah. No, I think the best course of action is actually to go leader here. So we're going to go with a leader status. And it would make the most sense for... Uh, yeah, it makes the most sense, I do believe. As you can probably guess, Skeletor is obviously going to be focused highly in Charisma, so we're just going to max that straight up. As for him going the Demon of Undead route, I should probably explain that. Now, as I have explained in my update stream, we will not be giving Skeletor the Demon Template, but we will do it for at least a few beginning stream, or at least for the beginning, and just slowly cycle him to the undead status. Now, because we are going for undead, if you really want to squeeze out the best efforts out of this, you want to remove as much constitution as possible. That just gives you some extra points to play around. Just be very, very careful with your character. This, Because I'm doing this, I'm just... I just know what I'm doing, so I can be I can actually make this decision and just be calculated with it. So don't worry about me. But if you are looking to play a Lich, dump the Kong. It is useless to you. Don't worry about it. Unless you're playing a Dampire. And you are not going Lich route. Dampires are another breed of interesting, and I will get to that in a minute, and it's probably gonna be the consistent amount of our party to give you a rough heads up. Alright, now this may seem like an odd choice, but I'm going to be putting a point into strength. I'm not entirely sure if this is going to be a focus, but it depends on what I figure out coming in the few days that we've, you know, got before I start this series off right off. But I'm going to be putting a point in strength. Because I'd like to get Karungan Smash. I'm not sure if it works though, so let me have a quick check just to be sure, but... You know what? Let's reduce it down for now. I don't need to worry about strength. So honestly, I could probably just dump strength as well. Because... Well, Skeletor has been known to go into melee and fights. But we're going to be using decks for that. So... We'll worry about the physicals later, but Dex is going to be our focus. We're going to have three points into Intelligence. This is specifically to focus on uh, combat feats, if we need any. And the majority we want to pump into Dexterity, if we can. And that will set us up with a very crazy allotment of stats. We're going to be very weak in physical and constitution, but we make up for that by being a powerful caster, naturally. With that in mind, though, uh, we won't be able to benefit from uh, strength-based attacks, so we should probably look for uh, things that are going to replace damage for dexterity, essentially. So that'll be our focus as we go along. Okay, we're going to focus into Persuasion. Use magic device. And we have one point which we can just spread anywhere. Which doesn't really matter where, ultimately. Uh, specifically though, I think we want to focus into mobility. If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, we'll put one point into mobility. Now for feats. Uh, let's see. Karungan Smash here. If you have Persuasion 6 and you damage an opponent with Power Attack, you may make an Intimidate... You make it 
you can make an immediate persuasion intimidate check as a free action. Okay. So what this means is, is if you're using a weapon attack that relies on power attack, so most wheelie weapons, you can intimidate somebody. You saw, th you probably saw this a little bit as I was playing the Kingmaker series with Stephen Armstrong. If you haven't seen that series, I recommend you check it out, of course, but to give you a rough idea, Kurungan Smash is really helpful to apply some of the best buffers in the game. Now, for, for the purposes of uh, this game in particular, we want to get things like Dazzling Display, because it will open the... Uh, it, it will open things up for the Shatter Defenses ability, which is way better. As you can probably tell though, Dazzling Display does require Weapon Focus, so you have to keep that in mind. But if you do get Weapon Focus, and you get Shatter Defenses on top of that, it only makes your job easier as you combat enemies. So let me give you a rough idea. Shatter Defenses... I haven't tested this out, mind you, so I'm still working off the uh, cut of my own jib, so if I'm spreading false information, I apologize. But I do believe, if my theory is correct, Shatter Defenses also works with spells. This means you will be bypassing Flat-Footed and Touch Attack AC. So having Shatter Defenses as a Sorcerer is actually pretty powerful, if you can make sure they are shaken. That is why the other party members coming in with Kurungan Sh Smash is so important. Having somebody to cast Kurungan Smash and just throwing out damage after damage is really important here, because that will allow you to cast more spells, get more hits in, and basically make you dominate the battlefield. But yes, I'm going to try a Shattered dis Defenses build, essentially, you know, as we go along. But if it works, as intended, and the Intimidate goes off without a hitch, Intimidate goes off without a hitch, things just work out, then we have ourselves a Prime build candidate for the game, essentially. And that's my strategy going through this, basically. Naturally, I would like to go lawful, but given Skeletor's nature, I am sadly going to have to go against it. The one reason I'm trying to go for it is because of the lawful nature, because that'll get us Monk. But there's an alternate way that I can use uh, the effects, and there is a few other ways I can go about getting stuff, so... All of that and more we will get to, but for now... That is the plan. We're going to aim for Dazzling Display at some point, but not right now. However, I will say this. For most casters, if you're looking to use attacks or touch attacks, you want to branch out into point-blank shots to get precise shots. Precise shot allows you to use shoot or throw ranged weapons at an opponent engaged in melee, without taking a minus 4 penalty to your attack rolls. This is vital if you want to cast spells in melee. So, if you want to cast spells like, I don't know, Scorching Ray, for example, a good staple, you need this feat in order to cast those spells. So it's a good, you know, thing to pick up on. So we're going to grab that. We do get a free feat because we are going uh, caster. A sorcerer specifically, mind you. So we do have that advantage. As for what we're going to go with, it really depends, honestly, because I do believe we are going Lich, so that really depends on us. Hmm. I think it's in our best interest to go with spell focus for now and focus into evocation here because we will be using a lot of evocation-based spells to deal dish out damage, essentially. So that is going to be our staple. 
as I had said before, a panther is going to be preferred. We can go for the simoleon, uh, but it really depends. Uh, let's see, leopard. I mean, simoleon's basically a stronger, it's basically a prehistoric panther, isn't, isn't it? Uh, let's see. Gains pounce and adds dex instead of strength to attacks. This has four claws attacks, though, and it gets pounce as well. We're going to go for the Simuldan, which is basically a panther in itself. There are a few methods that we could go. We could go for the Triceratops, and there's other things like Velociraptor or Wolf, for example. Uh, let's see, what is there? I am curious about whatever thing, what's here, after all. Uh, poison, if you want a giant centipede, there's poison, if you want that. Uh, if you're looking for a trip build, I recommend either dog or wolf. Both are good staples. If you want a tank, I would suggest boar or mastodon, actually. Both are viable, considering the circumstances, but we're looking for a panther, so Simuldan is going to be the closest thing next to a leopard. The reason we're going Simuldan is because they have plenty of attacks, which makes them an effective killer for our group. As for spells, naturally we want to focus on evocation, so that is the preferred method. Um, but we are actually going to grab a different set of abilities. So, let's see, what do we got? We've got Grease, mag Mage Armor. We can only choose two spells currently at the moment, so we got to keep that in mind. So, what we're going to do is we're actually going to go Magic Missile and Mage Armor. A weird choice to start out with, but a necessary choice. Having auto hits is always preferred. Now, deity selection. This is going to be a very controversial one. And probably something that you guys are probably going to be concerned with or interested about. Um, let me see. I do believe, yes. There are as many gods that we could go for. Even we, we could even become atheist as well. Uh, let me check to see if uh, Skeletor has any uh, deific alignments. If not, I'm just going to choose uh, something specific. Hmm, I see. Okay. Okay, so I had a quick look around, and, um... Yeah, Skeletor doesn't have any gods that I'm aware of. If there is any corrections, you may want to, you know, let me know. I might change it up for when we actually do make Skeletor properly. But, we are actually going to go for Iori here. Iori, also known as the Master of Masters, the Enlightened One, and the Perfect Human, is the god of enlightenment, self-perfection, knowledge, healing, and inner strength. His followers claim that he was once mortal who achieved absolute physical and mental perfection, and thus attained divinity of his own volition. He is one of the core gods, if not the most powerful deity of the Verandi Pantheon, but has an increased, increasing following in the inner sea region as well. The reason I am going Iori is because of the perfectionism, specifically. It may seem like an odd choice, but the only alternative, obviously, is atheism. No worship of the gods. Which is actually a funny choice if you go for it. I went atheist for my first route of this game. So it really depends on you. Um, but yeah, for this I'm just going to select uh, 
Iori for now. Otherwise, I will become Atheist. <laughs> Which is a weird choice. Oh, right. That actually changes what alignment you can go for as well. So, Iori might actually not be the best choice here. Hmm. Alright, well, because of mechanical reasons, we're going Atheist. Bugger it. We're going to be a chaotic evil boy, naturally. Our appearance, obviously, is going to uh, vastly depend on Skeletor, but... Hairstyle, we're going to get rid of as much hair as possible. There we go. No hair. Uh, let's see. We're going to want to make him gaunt, so we're going to go with body type 3. And there's no bluish skin color, so we won't be able to benefit from that just yet, but... We'll just go for the pale skin, yeah. Making a... Make, make Skeletor pasty white for now. As for appearance... We'll just go with the bland uh, option one. Color of eyes, we're looking for a nasty old red which is not existent so we're just gonna go for the pitch black war paint you know actually there is a skull painting paint that we can go with we're gonna want the golden color though so we should probably be aware of that okay we can either go for this paint or we can go for Let's see, is there any other paints? Nope, that's the closest thing we're going to get to uh, gold. I think we're going to want the paste, or the uh, brighter gold. Or do we go with the mucky gold? No, the mucky gold's a bit too dark. I think that works, yeah. Yeah, we'll go with the skele skeleton paint in this, that way. There we go. That Skeletor's face paint, it's going to be temporary, well, not temporary, obviously, but Skeletor things. As for his appearance, we want to look uh, for bl light blue and purple. So let's look for purple now. There we go. Um, let's see, we want, okay, so we got the blue garb, we got the purple garb, right, okay. Uh, we're going to look for a darker purple, I think. Alright, darker purple. And we'll go for a darker blue. Just to make things uh, look a little nicer. This is the closest I'm going to get to an appearance for him, so... That is that. I'm always ready. Now for voice. Hmm... I think I go for the Madman. Yeah, we'll go with the Madman voice. Plus, it's the most entertaining, so... We'll go with that. I, or I could go none. None is also an option, isn't it? Hmm. Nah, we'll just stick with Madman. Now, I have checked to see if I could find a name for Skeletor. Haven't found, well, a full name for Skeletor, I should say. I haven't found one, so he will just be named Skeletor. As for his date of birth, I don't know that either, so we're just gonna stick with 1-1 for now. But... I'll carve my name onto your flesh. That is going to essentially be the build for Skeletor, so you guys are aware. This is what I'm going to be building uh, for when we begin. I won't be confirming this choice just yet, but it is something you guys will be aware of and something I will be taking full advantage of, essentially. So this is essentially what I've got built, uh, what I've got planned for the near future, and what we will be doing. So yeah, that is going to be the focus here. Uh, we're obviously going to be doing the benefits from the beginning, and we are going to min-max like crazy. 
or at least to a point where it's not going to be a trouble for me to traverse on core difficulty anyways. So yeah. With that, I think I am good to go. So I'm going to wrap it up here. If you have any questions or things you want me to cover when we start actually beginning this series, let me know. But the plan is to, obviously, as explained, we're going to make Skeletor as beefy as possible. We're going to get him into the, you know, Intimidate shop. Or at the very least, we want to get him to a point where we can use uh, the Intimidate so he can bypass armor. And if it does work as intended, uh, Skeletor is going to be a very dangerous menace in battle by the time he reaches the level that's needed. Which should be level 7 or 9. One of the two. But yeah. Uh, that is the plan for, uh, for the build. At least for Skeletor's build, anyways. Uh, yeah. So I'm gonna wrap it up here. I know this was a short little, uh, mini, you know, exclamation, but this tutorial basically covers what I'm gonna be doing for, you know, stream one of Wrath of the Righteous. Gives you a rough idea of what I have planned out. I might change a few things depending on your comments if you have anything you want to say. I might change Kindred Rays, but it really depends. It really does. But yeah, that's my plan for the immediate future, and I think that is it. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you want to support me, the best way to do so is like, subscribe, comment, and hit the bell notification if you want to see more of my stuff. If you want to see my streams, just check me out on Twitch. I've already explained it in my many videos prior, so I'm not going to go over that constantly. And yes, with that out of the way, me and Skeletor will see you next stream. Take care, everyone, and have a good day.